There is a bright new comet, the comet Lemon or C 2025A6. Lemon, of course, is the name of the observatory which has discovered it. At the moment, it's quite dim at magnitude 7 or something like that. But it gets brighter as it gets closer to the Earth. And it has a distinctive green color due to the diatomic, means two atoms of the carbon, which are emitting in this uh, wavelength that are green. Uh, very common. We have seen several green uh, comets in the past. At the moment, it has developed a tail. The estimates for its magnitude varies. It may brighten up to magnitude 4.5, or it may even get brighter to almost magnitude 2. So it depends on the condition. From the 10th of October, it will be a circumpolar object for the more than above 48 degrees latitude. And uh, uh, from the 21st, it will be closest to Earth at that, this, uh, that time. And uh, anyway, this is the orbit of a very interesting orbit. It will be visible for the northern hemisphere, very easy. And as I said, in the, in, toward the north direction of the north, in the direct general direction of the Big Dipper or Ursa Major. And this is the pathway of it. It's practically from the late September, October, and uh, November partly will be visible to us. And I'm looking forward to it. I hope it gets bright. It will not be a lemon in English language. Lemon, calling a lemon, means that it will not be as bright. It will be a failure. It's common in the comets not, uh, not to get very bright. But I hope this comet is not a lemon. Lemon with one M. Lemon with double M is the name of that observatory which uh, this object was discovered there. I've observed similar objects in the past. I put uh, two videos that shows me how I observed this with two different op uh, telescopes. Uh, I'm using the Scott Watcher 72ED refractor telescope. It's an apochromatic telescope. And I'm using the Zeiss microscope eyepiece. Uh, this is the PL10 times 20. It's equal to the um, Teleview Panoptic 24 millimeter, 68 degrees. The image quality is excellent. I'm looking at the comet ZTF C 2022 uh, E3 and uh, E3 ZTF. And from corner of the image to the next corner, stars are sharp pinpoint. And very wide angle, especially the telescope itself is very wide angle also. I'm really enjoying the view, it's an excellent view. This eyepiece costs probably, I mean, it cost me around, I don't know, free, I think. It came with a microscope, I'm using it from a microscope. <laughs> so it doesn't cost me anything. And, uh, but uh, if you buy it online, this is around 40, 50, depending on where you buy it pound around sixty dollar and that will be around uh, yeah uh, one fifth of the price of the teleview panoptic and the quality <laughs> is, is equal or better panoptic has a at the corners of the image it has, it has some pink cushioning but this one is just all flat and this telescope is perfect for Take you with me outside and look it at the stars. Well baffled as you can see. I'm using the three logs of the white bean uh, tree it is a very hard wood as a base for this Dobsonian mount uh, and this telescope I image the comet and the result is here you can see I've written the details of the image and this is also a quick video of how it moves it's a time lapse the interesting thing is that this microscope eyepiece, this Zeiss microscope eyepiece, comes into focus on this uh, 
72 ED refractor. Um, Scott Watchers 25 Super A uh, wide uh, eyepiece doesn't come into focus on the moon at least. And uh, unbranded Chinese 20, uh, 30 millimeter eyepiece also doesn't come into focus, but this one comes easy. And the metal cap of this telescope also shows that this is a quality. Whatever telescope with metal caps I've seen, they were good quality. It's very compact. Nice and easy to carry. Oh, hallelujah. I can see now they come at uh, C2022 E3ZTF or Comet ZTF as it is now. It's very bright with a binocular 80 by uh, uh, 20 by 80. It's quite easy. By 7 by 50, a little bit less easy. And uh, of course, with the telescope, you can see it. I don't think that you can see any more detail than what you saw with the binoculars. And I'm really happy that I use the binoculars. This is a 12 inch Dobsonian. I'm using the 50 millimeter Siberia eyepiece. It's a Russian airfoil. Practically now, the comet is visible all through the night because it's now in the constellation Draco, but very close to the but um, uh, uh, you are some ma minor, it's practically circumpolar and it never sets at the moment. So very interesting, it has moved from the Buddhist and the Corona Borealis now over the last two weeks to this area of the sky where the Draco and the Yorsa Minor are there. Very visible and it has changed a lot. On over the past 24 hours, the change in the tail of it is amazing. You can see the anti tail, you can see the fan shaped tail, you can see the iron tail and the dust tail. Very interesting, uh, and it's because of the perspective uh, is changing, it's coming closer to Earth. Uh, February 1st will be the closest, and as it changes and gets closer to us, we see it from a different angle practically now. Okay, I can now see beside the coma uh, or the atmosphere of the comet, I can see the tail of it also, very clear. And the color of it, I must say that, uh, in the first initial impression is that it's kind of fuzzy whitish gray. But then when you look closer and your eyes get adapted to it, it turns a little slightly blue. It's not as uh, blue or green as the comet Leonard, but uh, you can notice that it is blue. Amazing, beautiful. This they say this is the diatomic carbon, which is uh, evaporated from the or eroded from the surface of the comet because of the existence of these hydrocarbons in there, organic material, and this organic material, not hydrocarbon, organic material is actually uh, decomposing by the photons of the light from the sun, and then joining again. Forming this diatomic means two atoms of the carbon joining together and just emitting this light, the blue light. Then when they pass and they join together, the, the light ceases to exist. You know, just after that, they don't emit that blue light. Just around the halo they do that, around the coma. Oh, hallelujah, I managed to actually photograph it. I cannot believe that. Handheld, known guided, photographing of the comets at TF. Oh, I've done it.
And I can confirm that uh, the color of the comet is blue, more blue and a little bit green. So that's what you see visually also.